Hello, good afternoon, and a very warm welcome to Continental Live. Today, we are joined by Dr. Arun Reddy Malu, consultant for orthopedic surgery here at uh, Continental Hospitals. Dr. Arun is an expert in knee, hip, and joint replacement procedures, as well as being a specialist in sports injuries, employing cutting edge technology and robotic surgical procedures. Dr. Arun steadfastly seeks improvement in patient outcomes and excellence in patient care. Sir, a very warm welcome to you and a warm welcome to all our uh, audience. Uh, today, you, we are, uh, yeah, today we are going to be talking about how to prevent uh, sports injuries. As we see, uh, a lot more of us today uh, are uh, willing to actively venture out and play sport, uh, but along with uh, playing sport, there are, of course, the dangers of injuries. So let's get right to it and uh, talk to Dr. Arun about how to prevent common sports injuries, sir. Yeah. Thank you for the warm welcome, Venus. Uh, good e uh, very good evening to everyone who have joined us. Yeah, I'm very glad that we are having this discussion. And that's a very relevant and important public health question. Because nowadays, we are seeing that people of all ages are involving in recreational and also very competitive sporting activities. We know that some sports involve upper body, some involve the lower body, and some sports generally uh, affect the entire body. However, broadly, to protect ourselves from any of the sports injuries, we need to follow uh, some advice given by the sports physicians so that you know we can avoid the sports injuries so let's come one after one the first and foremost thing is always be hydrated that is drink plenty of fluids before the activity and also during the sporting activity because if you are dehydrated it leads to reduced concentration and decision making it leads to impaired judgment and this will ultimately lead to some kind of a sporting injury. So always be hydrated, drink fluids before the sporting activity and also during the sporting activity. And the next important point is like being overtrained. That is, you know, there's a lot of overtraining that's happening with athletes, especially. Uh, the, I always tell to uh, the athletes who come to see me, always listen to your pain and respect that pain because the body is trying to tell you something that you are stressing me out and it's giving you the pain. So listen it and always respect it. And if you feel that you're always tired and in constant pain, then take rest for one or two weeks and then go back. So, uh, and also uh, keep telling this to my patients. Uh, giving rest to your body and helping it to regrow is also a part of training. So don't neglect that part of training. Right? Right. right. And Sir, also, uh, between any sporting activity, you need to do warm-up and stretching exercises. So what is a warm-up? So each sport has its own specific warm-up. For example, uh, you know, uh, practicing catches before uh, playing cricket or, you know, hitting those slow-paced tennis shots before an actual match. Or, you know, in soccer, we see these rondo drills you know, before the activity. So each game should have a specific warm-up routine before you actually enter into the uh, competition. And also, um, the warm-up should be in such a way that it increases your heart rate, increases your breathing rate, and you get that light sweat on your face and body. That's how any warm-up should be. And also do the stretching exercises where you're stretching all the opposite group of muscles before the activity so that you don't get into sprains or uh, tears like that. So warm up and stretching routine should definitely be there before any kind of uh, sporting activity. Right. Uh, sir, uh, while most of uh, what you have um, just described will uh, be applicable to somebody playing sport um, either as a professional or um, at a slightly serious level, uh, there are many of us, and I mean, uh, people like me who are more uh, of weekend warriors. So through the week, we are uh, completely sedentary, uh, no physical activity. And then 
uh, on a Sunday or on a uh, Saturday evening, uh, we go out into the park and we want to play a hard game of cricket or soccer or something like that. Uh, so can you uh, put this in context for the weekend warriors? Yes. Very true, Venus. This concept has already been uh, evidenced and researched. There's definitely this, this, this thing called weekend barrier. So this barrier is basically, uh, he has minimal physical activity during the weekdays. But during the weekends, he enters into very rigorous sporting activity. It has been evidenced and researched that these week weekend barriers are at prone for higher risk of injury. Uh, so the, the basic advice is don't just jump into high recreational or you know competitive sports only at the weekends. You have to maintain some level of activity even during the weekdays. Otherwise, you will be a weekend warrior and somehow develop and land up in some kind of injury because you're basically not fit all through the week, right? Right, right. Sir, you uh, briefly touched on uh, core strengthening and uh, warm-up. And going back again to people who play sport professionally uh, or seriously. Uh, so can you lay a little more emphasis on uh, what exactly is warm-up and what is the importance of warm-up in injury prevention? Yeah. So uh, regarding the core strengthening, uh, many people generally uh, do abdominal crunches and they, uh, they're more uh, concentrated on the uh, strengthening the front aspect of the body. But people neglect your back muscles, people neglect their glutes, people neglect their hamstrings. So you should always include planks in your routine. What are planks? You have a front plank, you have a side plank exercise, and you also need to do squats and lunges so that, you know, the back aspects of your, the back muscles of your body are also strengthened. So always inculcate or incorporate your plank exercises, both front and side planks, your glute strengthening and hamstring strengthening. Only then you will have a good proper core strength. Just doing abdominal crunches repeatedly doesn't give you a good core. You should also concentrate on the opposite group of muscles. Only then you can, uh, yes, that. And also having a proper technique. See, any sporting activity will have its own proper technique. If you don't follow the technique, you will be more prone to the injury. And also, you'll also be not good at that sport. So always learn the proper technique of the sport and also follow the rules of the game. The rules are actually in place so that you are you won't be injured. The rules are for that. At least 50% of the rules in any game are basically laid down so that you basically don't enter into these uh, complex uh, sports injuries. So always right. follow the rules. And also having the right equipment and protective gear is also important. Like, you know, having uh, good shoes. If you are wearing some worn out shoes and playing on that, uh, you basically flat, your feet will land in the wrong direction and you basically you, you might have a twisting injury. Mm -hmm. have, wearing proper gloves, you know, will uh, protect you from injuries of the hand and the wrist. And wearing some good pads, for example, in cricket, will basically prevent from uh, uh, bruises, abrasions, you know, that kind of activity. So having right equipment and protective gear is also important. Right. Uh, so friends, uh, this afternoon we are with uh, Dr. Arun Reddy Malu, who is consultant for uh, orthopedic surgery here at uh, Continental Hospitals. We are uh, having a discussion on how to prevent and deal with uh, uh, sports injuries. If you would like to have um, any question answered by Dr. Arun, please feel free to uh, put it in the comment section. We'll try and accommodate as many uh, as uh, possible. And uh, should you want to see him here at uh, Continental, there is a number that is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can call and find an appointment with uh, Dr. Arun. Sir, uh, moving uh, this uh, conversation further. Uh, now, we understood what causes or what preventive measures to be uh, taken. We spoke about warm up and then techniques and protective um, gear and all of that. Uh, but I'm sure um, any sport does have the risk of injury. Uh, while somebody is playing it. So, uh, sir, can you please help us understand what are the common sports injuries that you in your practice see that um, Indians or people uh, in our um, vicinity come to you uh, with uh, uh, for consultation or for uh, help? Yeah, that's a very good question, Venus. Um, 
so the one of the most common sports injury that i see in my uh, clinic is an ankle sprain so you might twist your ankle for whatever reason you might just be walking around uh, in your um, gated community or you might be doing a sporting activity for whatever reason uh, if you twist your knee your ligaments around the knee around the ankle get pulled too far and this might lead to a sprain or an injury so you immediately experience swelling around the ankle you might experience lot of pain and it's it might be difficult for you to take a walk i mean put weight on your on that side of the ankle so what you should do is you have to give total rest to that ankle put some ice pack around the ankle give it a nice compression with a creep bandage or something that's there at your home or you know your first aid clinic and elevate the leg so that all the swelling will come down so if the pain and swelling doesn't come down within 12 to 24 hours see your nearest orthopedician and remember that if you want to avoid yourself getting into an ankle sprain always strengthen the ligaments and the muscle group around your ankle sure sure Uh, so, and the second uh, most can... common thing is, is a shin splint so basically shin splints happen uh, in long distance runners or in any sports which involve a lot of running okay so what happens is when you're doing this kind of running you're basically uh, uh, your feet striking the ground it's a lot of force and the shins are the primary bones which absorb this shock and um, distribute it among the muscles and ligaments so whenever you have shin splints you, you should remember that you have to decrease your activity by at least 50% and use some non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs drugs give it a rest for 1 to 2 weeks and then begin a, uh, your running activity or your sporting activity whatever shin splints are one of the most common uh, uh, case scenarios that i see in my clinic okay and uh, i also see uh, things called tennis elbow tennis elbow is where you know the outer aspect of your elbow uh, pains a lot that basically happens if your sp- sports involve a lot of uh, forearm extension movements you know for example you are playing you are a tennis player and you are playing this backhand tennis or if you are a um, cricket player and you are playing this uh, shot of sachin tendulkar you know sachin tendulkar has also suffered with tennis elbow because he he plays a lot of this cover drives and weight involves a lot of uh, forceful wrist extension so um, any sport which involves this kind of activities will lead to pain on the outer side of the elbow and i also see golfer's elbow where uh, the pain is basically on the inner side of the elbow so any sporting activity which involves a lot of flexion of the wrist you know if it if it's involving the flexor group of the forearm muscles you have the pain on the inner side of the elbow and interestingly sometimes even uh, uh, any housemates if they do lot of this wringling of clothes you know once we dry the clothes to dry the clothes we basically wringle it even then uh, we see this tennis elbow kind of thing and uh, the most important thing and serious could be your acl injury it could be a pcl injury or meniscal injuries in the knee so mm-hmm. if you twist your knee uh, the two cruciate ligaments inside the knee which are very important for the stability of the knee could also be injured your menisci mm-hmm. which are act like a shock absorber could also be injured right and mm-hmm. other common things which i see in my clinic could be a basic uh, pulled groin if you are playing some kind of soccer games where you are doing the sideway steps and all or it could be a hamstring pull in the back of your thigh yeah these are some of the right. most common injuries that i see in my clinic right. yeah right uh, so i see some questions uh, coming in on uh, our facebook uh, uh, comment section and we'll take them as we uh, go along uh, sir as uh, you were you know briefly talking about the acl and uh, Uh, the pcl injuries and so on so uh, how common uh, uh, would it be uh, for you to see these kind of uh, patients um, and what are uh, the treatment modalities available uh, for somebody suffering from uh, any ligament uh, injury like an acl or a pcl yeah so basically winners there's a anterior cruciate ligament which we call it as acl and pcl we call it as a posterior cruciate ligament the acl runs from the front of your knee to the back and the pcl runs from back of your knee to the front they basically give stability to the knee joint so that your knee doesn't give away so uh, the acl and pcl injuries generally happen 
uh, when you twist your knee, that means, for example, you're playing basketball, you have gone for a jump and landed in a different way and your knee twists. So, and you will hear a popping sound inside the knee and mostly the your ACL might have torn. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you, are pay, you are in a sport where we call it as contact sports, where you are uh, playing rugby and stuff and somebody hits from side, uh, they jump into your knee and your knee just cramps like this, okay? So, right. these are the more, two most common kind of uh, um, uh, injury scenarios where you basically tear your ACL or PCL. As right. I told, the basic um, preventive measures... Uh, to prevent an ACL or a PCL injury is very important, which many of the people neglect it. You should build your muscles around the thigh. That is both the quadriceps and hamstrings. So that, you know, the load is uh, basically taken by these muscles when you are uh, landing. And also, you should train how to jump and land safely. So even your warm-up routine should have these exercises where you jump and learn to land safely. So that your knees don't basically cave inwards. These are the... So that's what. You should be trained how to jump and land safely. And you should also be trained to improve your balance. And how to improve your balance? You should basically do those single leg squats. You should do those split with rotations. You know, these are the kind of uh, exercises which improve your balance. Uh, and agility training. Uh, ch- um, agility training in changing directions. So there are a lot of games where you will be forced to change directions. That means you're running like this and you suddenly need to change direction. Mm-hmm. So you should also uh, simulate these uh, kind of scenarios in the warm-up itself so that you know you are uh, trained uh, to resist uh, the forces which lead to ACL and PCL rupture. Sure. So now, uh, you're. I think you're also asking me about uh, the recent treatment modalities, right, Venus? Right, right, sir. Yeah. So coming to the treatment modalities... Uh, now, uh, before 10, maybe 10 to 20 years ago, treating ACL was very cumbersome. But with the recent technology, ACL and PCL reconstruction have become a keyhole surgeries uh, where we harvest your own hamstring tendons or, I mean, or uh, patella tendon. And with the help of two keyholes, we put the camera in and some instruments from the other keyhole. We replace your torn ligament with your own body's ligament um, that's how it is done. We drill uh, two small holes, one in the thigh bone and one in the leg bone and fix the new ligament with two tight ropes. It's basically like a suspensory bridge. You know? We call it a suspensory, me- suspensory fixation. So okay. um, it's basically safe. The success rates are really good in good su- surgeon hands. Um, you need not worry. Uh, many ask me whether will I be able to get into sporting activity after the ACL surgery. We have treated many athletes who uh, with this. Uh, we have done uh, ACL and PCL surgeries to many athletes, and they have gone to win national medals, the state medals, and uh, they played kabaddi bag. You know, so do not worry. You can definitely enter into uh, re-enter into your sporting activity after the this uh, ACL and PCL surgery. But remember. A good rehabilitation program is must after the ACL or PCL surgery. And in Continental Hospital, the surgeon, the physiotherapist, and the nutritionist, the three act coherently and see that you enter into your sporting activity very soon. Right. So uh, it is almost like you're reading my mind because these were the two uh, aspects that I was going to come to uh, next. Uh, friends, uh, today we are with uh, Dr. Arun Reddy Malu, who is a uh, consultant for orthopedic surgery here at uh, Continental Hospitals. And we are talking to him about uh, sports injuries, how to prevent them, how to treat them, and so on and so forth. Um, and as you can see, there is a number that is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Uh, should you want to consult him and meet him, feel free to call on that number. And if you have any questions that you want to ask him uh, while this uh, live stream is going on, feel free to Uh, put it in the comment section. We have some questions uh, already in there and uh, I would take uh, all of those at uh, the end uh, when we come to the... Yes, I could see a question. Uh, I could see a question. Somebody is asking me uh, to comment on shoulder injuries. 
yeah so i'll uh, i'll come to the questions uh, at the end uh, doctor we'll we'll take all of them uh, together uh, i wanted uh, you to talk about uh, the advancements in uh, in the treatment modalities uh, because uh, for a sports person it is uh, it is such a big worry when they get injured whether they'll be able to get back into action whether they will uh, be able to perform at the same uh, level whether they will be able to find their place in that team uh, and uh, in this either they want to take quick fixes or they don't want to do proper rehab or they want to rush their comeback uh, to uh, full steam action uh, so can you please comment on these aspects which oftentimes we see causes uh, relapse injuries or compound injuries very true venus so if you don't give enough time to rehabilitation program after especially after a sporting injury and you jump back into the sports you might re-rupture your uh, new acl so that's the reason why before re-entering into the sporting activity you should discuss with your physiotherapist and your surgeon are you in a right physical condition to re-enter so we have many uh, uh, tests to confirm that you are in that level of physical fitness for example the basic thing we call it a single leg hop distance for example if you have injured your right knee you should be able to jump at least 80% uh, uh, of the distance that you jump with the left left knee that's called single hop so the distance of uh, if you calculate the distance your injured knee should at least be towards 80% of the distance when you are doing a single leg hop okay um that's one thing and coming to the second thing nutrition if you are not eating high protein diet and you are into all kind of junk food post surgery it might your muscles might not in get the that strength back or you might be prone to more infections or the healing could be much slower than a normal guy okay and regarding the recent techniques yes we have different modalities of uh, um treatment for different kinds of conditions for example we do uh, prp injections which is called stem cell therapy basically if for example if there is any small uh, uh, very minute cartilage uh, lesions we do uh, prp we give prp injections in your knee joint or your shoulder joint if there is a cartilage damage big defi big defect we do oats technique okay i mean we take cartilage from other area and put it there or we do an autologous chondrocyte implantation implantation so these are different kinds of treatment um, there are different kinds of treatment modalities based on the kind of injury that you have so you should always discuss that with your orthopedic surgeon ask him the pros and cons of each treatment modality and you will be in a position to take the decision right venus right sir so uh, before um, we lose uh, some of our audiences because they have uh, the questions waiting they're slightly away from uh, our subject matter uh, this evening but nevertheless we'll answer a couple of questions and then we'll circle back uh, to our subject before we close uh, this live stream today so uh, mr suresh is asking us sir uh, would you recommend a knee replacement for a 76 year old uh, female non diabetic uh, non hypertensive uh, patient uh, if you could help uh, mr suresh with Uh, Rish, we have done uh, uh, many replacements even to 90 year old people we have we have even done partially replacements for a 90 year old person we have done totally replacements around 90 so as i told uh, if he is in a good physical condition to tolerate a surgery number one and does he really need a surgery that's the most important question i mean is he really suffering with the pain so if he is really suffering and is if he is fit for the surgery age is no limit we have done lot of total knee replacements and partial knee replacements for uh, people around 90 years of age right sir uh, the second question we have is from mr shrikant who is uh, looking for a solution for uh, joint pains so if you have any uh, solution for them uh, mr shrikant would be very glad yeah shrikant so basically we should find a reason for the joint pain so the joint pain is just a symptom right so uh, and for that symptom there could be many reasons it could just be a, a minor injury to a major ligament rupture or a meniscal injury you know or a chondromalacia of the patella where you know the cartilage of your knee cap becomes very smooth you know so there are many uh, reasons for the joint pain first we should identify the reason so we have to see the if the joint pain is troubling you for a long time 
you have to see your doctor get him get tested by him clinically and if he writes any investigations get them done and discuss so that if once you get the reason for the joint pain you could definitely address it right all right so those were a couple of questions that uh, our audience had now uh, circling back uh, to the uh, subject of sports related uh, injuries one uh, aspect um, i thought especially for uh, amateur uh, sports people people who play uh, for recreational uh, purposes uh, the subject of hydration uh, how much of water do you drink and um, are there substitutes that you can take and uh, how does it really help you uh, prevent injuries if you can uh, focus a little bit on this yeah so uh, drinking fluids doesn't mean that you drink just plain water where you gulp in liters of liters of water before the activity and uh, during the activity basically it should contain some amount of glucose it should contain some amount of electrolytes like sodium potassium chloride and stuff like that so just just plain water is always not sufficient so to if to see that you are not dehydrated a basic ors solution you know uh, where from childhood we have been listening to this powder called uh, uh, glucol powder right so right. it has glucose it has all the electrolytes that you need just that mm, bottle of uh, electoral powder is enough to keep you hydrated right right all right uh, so the uh, other question that i uh, i have and this is for you know people who uh, play sport slightly at uh, a more serious or professional level uh, the kind of facilities that we need at a sporting venue you are having uh, a children's um, competition or a sports day or something like that so what kind of basic facilities do you need uh, to make sure that uh, either uh, serious injuries are prevented or moderate injuries are effectively dealt with at the venue itself so if uh, there is a sporting activity going on at a, at a venue um, any sport first of all you should have a person who can deal uh, who can deal or do the first aid of any injury and what is a first aid for any any injury total rest to that uh, area ice pack should be available there should be uh, some aluminum splints for example there could if a, if a fracture happens we need to immobilize the area right and to immobilize the area you need some aluminum splint you need to have an antiseptic solution so that you know if there is any bruise or whatever we just uh, uh, paint that area with the antiseptic solution so there should be there should definitely be one guy who can deal with all kinds of uh, injuries at a basic level as i told you rest ice compression elevation and immobilization immobilization with aluminum splints and do some kind of first aid mm, with the uh, betadine solution or a, a spirit solution like that and also a vehicle to transport someone from that venue to the hospital and especially when a competition is going in a large scale you should also intimate to the nearest hospital that you know we are doing uh, this kind of activity today um please uh, let your sports physicians or your orthopedicians or your casualty people be little on their toes you know so it, um, there should be some coordination between the nearest hospital and the venue right, All right. and All right. regarding prevention we have been always talking we have all this while we have been talking regarding the prevention right never enter into a competitive sport without a proper physical fitness or without a proper warm up routine and a stretching routine so and also don't be a weekend warrior so these are the simple things which have been discussing all this while to prevent right all right right we've had a very long and uh, uh, you know informative discussion on uh, sports related uh, injuries with uh, uh, dr arun reddy mallu uh, if you have any uh, concerns of your own feel free to uh, uh, call on the number that you screen, uh, see on the screen uh, and uh, dr arun will be more than happy uh, to hear your queries and answer your queries and uh, take it from there sir uh, in conclusion uh, is there anything that you would like to talk about uh, the department of orthopedics especially of uh, sports medicine here at uh, continental before we close this uh, stream uh, this evening yeah i know it's not like boasting about the hospital that i work in but uh, i just wanted to say uh, it to people who are listening in here at continental hospitals we are having a very good team of sports surgeons 
we have a very good team of uh, physiotherapists who are basically uh, into rehabilitation of very competitive athletes in fact many of the sports associations are associated with the continental hospitals team we have a very good nutritionist team where uh, they explain you the importance of the diet in your rehabilitation or recovery process and forgetting about the hospital i just wanted to sell, uh, tell this to any athlete or any sport person who injured himself do not lose your confidence wherever you are go to your nearest orthopedician even if he doesn't have the expertise to treat a sports injury he will be the person to guide you always discuss the pros and cons of any surgery of any treatment modality with your physician or i mean with your surgeon or an orthopedician and always be honest in your uh, suffering so then people are definitely there in the society to help you out and take you in a good direction right all right i think uh, that's uh, what we have for uh, you this uh, afternoon uh, we'd like you uh, all to share this video if you uh, really found it uh, informative uh, if you have more comments feel free to leave them in the comment section whether you're watching us on uh, facebook or uh, on uh, youtube uh, do share uh, with it uh, share uh, the video with your friends with your colleagues and so on uh, and if you need a consultation feel free to uh, call on the number that you see uh, on the screen Uh, also our uh, hospital url is uh, visible you can log in uh, you can leave a direct message on our social media channels and we'd be more than happy uh, to help you dr arun thank you so much uh, uh, for yeah. taking uh, the time from your busy uh, schedule and uh, talking to our audience uh, to our audience thank you for joining us if you will watch this later in the future uh, feel free uh, to get in touch with us Uh, and we'll be more than happy to help you until next time from dr arun myself and everyone here at continental hospitals it's thank you and goodbye thank you